Hi guys, it's Clyde. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a highly awaited one. I'm finally going to be redoing an old tutorial that I did on a basic leotard pattern. Leotard bodysuit, I might use those terms interchangeably. Leotard is really the better name for what this is called. Bodysuit is more what you would call a sort of garment like this that you would find at the mall that girls can wear as a top that's tucked underneath their jeans. Potato Potato, it's essentially just a very basic dance costume made out of some four-way stretch fabric. It's been given lots of flack lately because of RuPaul's Drag Race, I think, but Leotide is really one of the harder garments to create because it's a challenge in hugging the proportions of your body, and even though we are working with stretch fabric, even a half inch of a difference can make the world of a difference in making your legs look longer or hugging your curves more in a more flattering way. I don't even really think I've mastered it, but I'm gonna show you guys my process and how I do it. This is not gonna be the easiest of tutorials because I've um, put a zipper in the back, but if you don't want to deal with a zipper, what you can do to replace that is just cut a really large neck hole so you can step into it. But once you get the hang of this tutorial, there's so much you can do with this. You can add sleeves, you can make it into a gown, into a catsuit, you can add fringe, rhinestones. This is really going to be a very important basic foundational garment in your wardrobe, so that's why I really wanted to make another video about this going really in depth. So sorry about the length of this video. Um, I hope you guys learn a lot, but without further ado, let's jump into it. Alright you guys, so one of the main things I want to accomplish with this video, aside of course from showing you the finished product, is to arrive at a basic bodysuit pattern that we can use to just cut the fabric out of. Once we have our basic shape, we can really go on and putting the pieces together is kind of just like clockwork after that. I've been sewing for about two years now. In the beginning, I was very resistant to using patterns. I thought it just made everything more complicated, but my opinion around that has really changed over the past two years. It just makes it so much easier if you want to create the same thing in another color, um, if you want to create a similar thing but just with sleeves or with a high collar. Having that pattern to reference just makes things so much easier. So how do we start off in the first place with that very fundamental shape that we can just trace out? So I tried to think of the easiest, most accessible way for you guys to approach this, and I think that would be through using an old garment that fits you quite nicely. I figured some of you might not have another dance costume, might not have another drag costume that you can trace out, so I'm just wearing my regular boy clothes from my closet. This is just a tank top, muscle shirt, um, I would call this a sando in Tagalog. And then to measure the bottom, I've just got on some <laughs> briefs. These actually stretch, so they're not the best thing to use. So what I'll do is I'll take a measurement around my hips, and I am measuring uh, 32 inches, 81 centimeters, so I'll keep that locked away in my memory. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is trace out this and this together to create one single piece. The reason I put it on is because I want to see how much they overlap. So I'll actually tuck this into my underwear. Hopefully this doesn't get demonetized. I'm trying to keep this video advertiser friendly. <laughs> if I squint my eyes, I can sort of see this resembles the shape that I want to create. So I can see that my sando comes down to about here. So I'm putting a pin right in here. So I'm going to take this off now and we're going to transfer this to paper. All right, so I've got this brown wrapping paper from Staples. I'm going to unroll some of this. All right, so I've got my sando right here laying flat and also my underwear. You'll notice this is too loose around the hips and this is too tight because remember I measured my real hips to be 32 inches? Well, if it's 32 inches all the way around, it ought to be 16 inches in the front and 16 in the back. But if I measure this, this here is 19 inches in the front and my underwear is about 13 and a half inches in the front, which is a little bit of a problem, but like I said, this is the best I could find in my closet of boy clothes. The first thing I'm gonna do is fold this in half because this is just gonna help our piece be more symmetrical down the middle. And I'll fold this in half as well. And I'm gonna line it up to where that pin was because this is where um, my sando met the bottom. So that is the whole point of putting that pin there. Now, if I fold it in half, my waist measurement, if it was 16 inches in the front, Halfway, it should be eight inches. That would fall right about there, which is sort of in the middle. I'm gonna take my top piece and sort of fold it over just to meet that mark. And so I'm kind of blending it in to the bottom piece. I'll put a pin in this. Now I think we're in a good place to go ahead and trace this out. So this here should just be a straight line because it's a fold. And then I'm gonna go
All I've done here is I've just traced the back. If I want to trace the front, I would have to tuck in this back part because the front neckline actually dips a little bit lower. Um, in the underwear, this would go a little bit inwards. So I'll make a separate piece for the front. But before I do that, I want to point out, since this is a man's top, from the armpit down to the hips, just go straight down. But I know that I want a sort of hourglass figure. This pin told me that when I put this on, this is right where my hip falls, which would be my widest part. So if this is my hip and this is right at the bottom of my armpit, I'm going to say that I want it to go in just a little bit like that. I mean, you can get a nice measurement of where um, your waist measurement would fall on this, but I'm kind of just eyeballing this because I've done this before. So I'm going to cut this out and create a duplicate for my front. So I'm going to trace this onto another piece of paper because I want to create an exact duplicate of it for the front. But you're going to see that I'm going to add some alterations to the front. I'll label this back. So if I want my front neckline to match the neckline that we had on my sandal, I can just measure right down to here. But I mean, it's up to you if you want your neckline to go really low or really high. That is your choice. So let me just say that's about there, that neckline. And then I'll just connect it with a nice curve like that. Now I want to trace the front of this underwear like this, but I've got this back piece going on. So maybe I can try to tuck it in a little bit. Now because of the nature of men's underwear, we have this thick strap here where the hips are. My personal taste is I like um, a really high cut on my legs. So I'm actually going to take this up here and I just know that I like my um, hips to come up a little bit higher. So I'm going to say this is my front. And if you're uncomfortable with the eyeballing in this step, you don't have to do that. You can wait till after you've made your garment, after you put things together and tried it on. And then you can wait till then to say, oh, I actually want a little bit lower of a neckline or a little bit higher of a cut or lower of a cut. That is all up to you. I actually think in one last alteration that I'll make right here um, is maybe I want my straps to go in a little bit more than this. So I'm not going to change these points right here because these need to connect to the back but I'm gonna say I want it to come in a little bit thinner, like that. I'll show you just by laying them on top of each other how the front and the back differ in that the front is just a little bit smaller than the back. You still have lots of time to make plenty of alterations later on. These are not necessarily going to be the same patterns that you take on with you towards the future. We haven't seen yet how this translates to a finished garment. And once we sew things and try things on, maybe we're going to realize that these were all wrong. So these are just going to be, um, I guess, a tentative pattern for right now. All right, so I've got um, some four-way stretch neon fabric right here. It's four-way because you can tell it stretches in this direction and in this direction. They really should call it two-way because this should count as one and this should count as two. But Anyway, this is fabric that stretches in all directions, which means it's very good for beginners, very good for your first sewing project, or your first bodysuit, because it's very forgiving. So I'm gonna fold this because the patterns are meant to be done on a fold. So I'm gonna line up this straight line right to the fold of the fabric. I don't wanna make marks on the fabric with my permanent marker because I don't want it to leave a big stain and possibly bleed through the front. So I just use this little lipstick. I'm just gonna trace right around the pattern you don't have to be right up close to it because you can allow yourself some seam allowance. And then I'm going to cut this out. All right, now see how when I unfold this, we have our front pattern for our bodysuit. All right, and then this is the back of the costume. Um, but let me iron out some of these creases, actually. So I'm going to add a layer of complexity to this tutorial and actually we're going to be sewing a zipper down the back of this so that we can get into this a little bit easier. The way I do that is I'm going to fold this back up again. I'll put a couple of pins holding the edges together so it doesn't slide around too much. And I'm just going to take some scissors and cut right along the crease. Well, first of all, the zipper comes with a little bit excess material right there. And I tend to just cut that right off. 
This is the left side of the zipper right here, and this is the left side of the fabric. So I'm gonna face them right on top of each other, right sides together, by placing the zipper right beside the fabric there. And I'm just gonna pin them together. Once we fold it over, it will just be nice and hidden. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. This right here is the standard foot on it. If I take it down, this is the foot that we use with most sewing projects. When you buy your machine, it should come with a so-called zipper foot that is used for putting on zippers. The difference here is that this just allows the needle to get much closer to the zipper. I'm gonna press down the foot. I'm taking out this first pin. Do a couple of stitches, then back stitch to secure it in place, and then just go for it. With stretch fabrics, we tend to want to sew on a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, but because the zipper doesn't stretch, you're just going to sew on a regular straight stitch right now. So the zipper stops right about here. I'm not going to sew all the way there. I'll sew right about to where this red pin is, and then I'll stop. So now you can see I can zip this up, and we've got it half on. For the second half, I want to put it right here. Again, I'm going to have to fold it over. Let me know if you guys want a detailed video just about putting in zippers. I know in this video, it's kind of a lot of information in one. If you don't want to put a zipper in your garment, maybe you're not at that stage yet, an easy way to get around it is just to give your garment a really big neckline. Then you can just step into it without needing a zipper. On the other side, I stopped sewing right about here. That's also where I need to stop on this side. So if I line it up, that would be right about there. So let me actually start there. This angle is a little bit more up close and personal. You can see what I mean. This zipper foot allows us to get the needle right up next to the zipper. So when it's all said and done, the zipper is almost barely hidden because all of this fabric to the right of the needle is completely hidden. And all you see is the actual teeth of the zipper. All right, so if I zip things up, you can see the zipper is nicely hidden. I'm just gonna add a nice seam to finish it off at the bottom. I've got this pinned together. This is, of course, the bottom of the bodysuit that doesn't have the zipper on it. And I've got this part of the zipper pinned together. Do you see how right here is where we stopped sewing on the zipper? We want to do one nice stitch from here all the way down to the bottom. And now we can actually switch our machine to do a stretch stitch because we're gonna be sewing stretch fabric to stretch fabric, not stretch fabric to zipper. All right, so here is our back piece with the zipper installed and you can see it's nice and smooth and finished at the bottom. Let's just give you a demonstration of opening it up and closing it. Now, it is worth noting that when you do this, it takes a couple of centimeters off of here where you had planned for this to be part of your pattern. You might want to account for that in your pattern if you were sewing something that had to be very perfectly fitted. But again, because this is stretch fabric, the flexibility of it comes in very handy here that those couple of centimeters are pretty much negligible. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew this. I'm going to take my front piece and lay it right on top. And I'm going to pin them along the shoulders. I'll also pin along the sides from the armpit down to the hip and right here at the crotch is where you want to attach them. All right, so now we're just going to sew this with stretch stitch along the sides, the shoulders and the crotch.
All right, guys, so I've put on my bodysuit. I put on my little drag body underneath so I really get a feel of how it's gonna look like. And it's a really good fit. This is what it's looking like from the back. Um, not too many major problems. I really like the way it came out. But I do see a couple of things where I could make some alterations. The first thing my eyes zoom right into is these little flaps of fabric right here. The reason they're bulging out like this is because of the bra I'm wearing underneath. We sew our bodysuit so that it has just a flat front and a flat back that we piece together. And that doesn't account for how our body is three-dimensional. See how if I pinch this and I fold it down and put a pin in it? If that is folded down, the shoulder just looks cleaner and more crisp versus this side here with the flap going on there. The second thing that I'm noticing is there's a little bit of ruching and wrinkling going on around here around the crotch. And that's because the space between my legs is not that wide, but there's way too much fabric here. So when my legs are closed, all of the fabric is just being bunched up and it's creating those wrinkles. Turning to the back, I don't see too many problems. Nothing I um, am completely horrified by. I mean, I could make the butt a little bit skimpier. Mm, sure, let's do that as well. <laughs> this is that place that I pinned it to sew those darts. Let me just flip it inside out real quick. So I'm gonna take out this pin and replace it with my finger just pinching it. We actually are gonna have to fold it the other way so the right sides are being folded together, just like that. I'm basically just gonna sew in one straight line that comes down just like that. And that's all I'm gonna do, and that is gonna be our dart, right? So that this pinched up fabric stays pinched up. So there it is on that side. Now to make sure it perfectly matches with the other side, I'm gonna match up the side seams like this so that the dart falls exactly at the same distance away from the armpit that it did on the other side. Okay, so there we have the two darts on both sides. For the sake of having our pattern match up with what we wanna do in the future. Right here is the distance from where I cut the fabric to where that dart falls. Eyeball it a little bit, the other part of the dart falls right about here. Let me take a straight edge right in between them is where we can mark out that we want a dart. And the way it works is that it just folds in the middle like that. Now in the future, next time we cut out another piece of fabric to make this in another color, we'll know exactly where on the fabric to mark it out and pinch it and sew it to make that little triangle. For the crotch, the first thing that I wanted to do was take the back, so where my butt is, and take that a little bit more inwards. I like the height of it, so I don't want to cut this higher, but I am gonna cut a little bit more inwards this way. To get the crotch a little bit thinner, you're gonna wanna fold it in half, and then just cut inwards a little bit more like this. just little by little. I'm gonna take this time now to make some alterations to my pattern because I know that there's another thing that I wanna to change to it. I'm gonna lay the front and back on top of each other again. Now the pattern is more closely resembling what I want out of my finished garment. I find in my experience, I'll just do this multiple times. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect the first time I cut it out after tracing my boy clothes. After I make these garments two or three times, I'll have reached a point where I can just trust the patterns. I don't need to make any more alterations on top of them because I've done all that I want to. So now let's go ahead and hem our garment. And all that entails is you just basically have to fold it inwards. And all this is gonna do is hide the raw edges so that it has a really finished edge to it.
So now that I've got all of my hems pinned in, I'm just gonna sew it on a stretch stitch. You can also use a zigzag stitch. Either one will preserve the stretch. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. All right, you guys, we're finally done, and this is how the garment looks after putting it on, and the fit I'm really happy with. And then now is the point where you can style it and accessorize it and really make it look a lot more expensive by maybe adding some embellishments to it and really stamping your own personality onto it. Because the truth is that it does look like quite a simple garment, especially to the untrained eye. Um, but to me, at least, it's not as simple as it looks. Anyway, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and that you get a chance to try it out on your own. And if you do, be sure to tag me on Instagram at OnlineKind. I'd love to see your recreations. But until I see you guys next time, I hope you're all doing well. Bye!